I'm Sarah Storelli, on a quest to discover the people behind the cutting edge innovations across industries, to tell the stories that define them far more than their titles. My guest today is Andreas Tata. Hi, Andreas. Thanks so much for being here today with me on the vodcast. So excited to bring your story to life. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Of course. So let's dive in. So my first question for you is, how does your culture really shape and define you personally as well as professionally? I think I'm a unique mixture of of three different cultures. Uh, My parents are both Armenian, Armenian, born uh, in Istanbul. So I have that traditional part of the family. Uh, They're survivors from the 1915 genocide. My great grandparents are. So there's a, a resilience component inside of me uh, and, and a lot of tradition and, and family values. Um, they were educated actually in, in uh, the UK. Uh, and I went to a Scottish high school and, and school in Argentina. So I have the Anglo-Saxon background as well. And then I think I also have the, the unique flavor of Latin Americans. I mean, that, that flair, that twist... Latin Americans, especially Argentines, are very creative. We need to be flexible, thanks to all of the, uh, you know, economic situations that we've lived through. So I like to think that I have the mixture of those three. I've always considered myself a work hard, play hard kind of person. Um, I work really hard. I'm very, uh, I, I demand a lot out of me and my teams, but I also demand a lot out of my social life. I like having fun. Uh, I love traveling a lot. Uh, So when I got to uh, AWS, I saw there was a a motto that was work hard, have fun, which is part of what I am. And then there was this make history part, which I thought was really unique. And working in the public sector is a great component of what we do is we have an impact on, on broader society. Absolutely. And so you you love to travel. Yeah. And so how do you think those experiences have helped shape your perspective as far as working with so many people, whether it's our customers, partners, your team members? You know, how has that travel really helped shape how you, you know, collaborate and manage people? Yeah, so I've traveled to over 80 countries, uh, including Antarctica, since I turned 18 years old. I really love to travel. And I'm going to get to over 100, hopefully, sometime soon. Amazing. Yeah, and I've, I've had close encounters with tons of different animals, like <laughs> chased up a tree by a rhino, <laughs> nearly got an eaten by a hippo in Africa. Oh, my God. Had a very close encounter with a bear in Alaska and, and lots of other animal stories. But um, I guess that part isn't related to the work, <laughs> if, if you want. But, but what I do uh, know is that ever since I was very little, I traveled a lot. My parents... Uh, made me visit the whole world. And the people that I'm working with, either customers, partners, or, or teammates, might have a different, uh, you know, unique background, and you need to understand them. And I think that the diversity that we have in the team makes us such an amazing, uh, you know, high-performing team. Agreed. So, Given all of that, what would you say is your favorite Amazon leadership principle? I know there's 16, uh, but if you had to choose one, which one is your most favorite and why? One of the main reasons why I wanted to come to uh, AWS was the leadership principles. I wanted to live and breathe them. And uh, I've had maybe 30 years of corporate career in different multinationals. And uh, I've never seen Uh, leadership principles that are in your day-to-day activity the way we have them in Amazon. I love all of them, uh, but it would be, I'm not going to be creative here. Uh, (laughs) Customer obsession. I love being customer obsessed. I love what we do for our customers. If I had to choose one, customer obsession. I love that. And I agree. I feel like, so I've had a corporate career myself. I think what I also love about AWS is that truly the leadership principles are lived by everyone day to day, whether it's, you know, in emails, how we interact with one another. And I've never seen a company like that either. So I find that quite inspiring in that sense. And so I know you touched upon, you know, having a, you know, I know you have an amazing corporate career, you know, multinational. Given all of that, who would you say has inspired you the most throughout your life? And there may be multiple people, of course, but is there any one standout that comes to mind? There are multiple. My my parents, definitely. My dad being so hardworking, 
coming to Argentina with 25 years old and not speaking Spanish. My mom, crazy, beautiful person that always is happy no matter what. Uh, my children, my children are very conscious on the planet. Uh, I think we need to leave a better planet to the people uh, that are coming after us. And, and that's part of what I love about AWS, this climate pledge commitment and this success and scale brings broad responsibility. Leaving the world a better place, influencing definitely my children. I want to leave my mark. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, the world's too big, you can't make a difference. Uh, I disagree. I actually want to make a very big difference on my own personal square meter. So the people that I'm in contact with every day. Uh, and the day I, I pass away and I'm no longer in this world, and I hope it's in a long, long time, uh, I want it to be a celebration. I want my family and my friends to get together and have fun uh, reminiscing and telling stories about the crazy things I did. And I, there are a lot of crazy things that I did. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> and because I, I don't know that I should. Uh, but I like maximizing life. So inspiring. And so you touched upon it a little bit already, but you know, one of my final questions for you here is that what do you want to be known for to future generations when all is said and done? I want to be, I mean, nothing, nothing great here, but I want to be known as a great dad. I want my kids to remember me. I think that uh, that's one of the two reasons I've been put on this planet is to be a great, great parent to my three kids. I'm convinced I love them eternally. So being a great dad, being a great husband, being a great friend, a great co-worker, inspiring people to give it their best. Professionally, I think that Latin America is a unique region and we haven't managed to fulfill our, our opportunities yet. So, um, you know, we have this 29 million pledge that we want to help train uh, cloud skills by 2025. In Latin America, we've already trained 1.7 million people uh, totally for free. And by 2026, we will have a skills gap of 2.5 million people in Latin America. So I want to help through AWS train those people. I want Latin America to be a land of opportunity in terms of having a lot of talented people working in technology, working in cloud, uh, making Latin America a better place for the 600 million citizens of Latin America. Uh, we've done, for example, uh, more than 25 elections and census in Latin America. And I don't think there's a better way of impacting the lives of Latin Americans than making sure that their elections are fair and transparent. Uh, recently, uh, just last year, we did the Brazilian election, which was the largest uh, electronic democratic election in the world. 157 million people voted. Uh, we had at peak time 1.5 million uh, requests of information per second. That's how big it was. And having that kind of an impact in, in society, everything we do in the public sector um, gets amplified. Mm -hmm. because it has an impact on the well-being of the citizens and, and, and of the cities in which we, we operate in. All the dots in my life have connected, so I don't know where this uh, interview is going to take me, but it's going to take me somewhere. <laughs> I know, we, uh, we can Argentina. launch a morning show here. <laughs> we'll, we'll go on a global road show. There we go. <laughs> From Antarctica to Africa and you know every continent. Uh, you know, my final question for you is, as you know, generative AI is, of course, involved in every conversation. Yes. And so from your perspective and, of course, how it relates to public sector and, you know, for Latin America, you know, what are some of those high-level opportunities that you see generative AI making a difference for, you know, in your region? Yeah, I would say that it's it's got to do with increasing productivity of the teams uh, and extracting value out of, out of the data. Mm -hmm. And that is the key part of what we do in, in the cloud. So one example is, uh, within the government vertical, we are, we're deep diving on uh, judicial and, and, and the court systems. And there's a great opportunity with Gen AI to summarize all of those terabytes and terabytes of filings uh, and summarizing them in one page so that it's easily ac accessible and, and easy to find. So a lot of impact for, for our Latin American customers uh, coming up with Gen AI. 
Well, that's amazing. I'm excited for all the opportunities ahead. And I want to thank you so much for your leadership and being such an inspiration to so many of us around the world. And thank you for all that you do and for being such a kind, empathetic leader. So thanks for being on the podcast today. Immensely appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, very happy to be here and uh, let's have fun. Thank you.